Hey everyone, welcome back to another video in the beginner scripting series. Sorry if I sound a little congested right now, I'm a little sick, but I'm still gonna record this video for you guys. Anyway, let's go ahead and get right into it. Today we are talking about GUIs, local scripts, UI, all that fun stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Alright, so what we're gonna start out with is we're gonna make a screen GUI inside of starter GUI. And this is what holds all of our UI. So frames and buttons, things like that, they're all placed in this item called a screen GUI. Now, I'm going to start by showing you some things you can add, and those things we're going to cover today are frames, text buttons, text labels, and local scripts. Let's start by inserting a frame, and as you can see, now we have this little white box in the corner, and it's not a 3D object, it is a 2D thing that follows our screen. So what we can do is we can click the frame, and we can drag it around, we can click these little corners to resize it, and we can do whatever we want with this. So that is what frames do, we can hold different things inside of frames. And if we come down, this is something that all UI, basically all UI has, and it's a property called visible. So if we scroll down and find visible, we can uncheck and check that to make this visible, which is a super cool feature if you want UI to be going in and out, depending on what's happening in your game. Now let's insert a text button inside of this frame, and we can move this around. Now with text buttons and text labels, there is a property down here, so let's scroll down, called text. It's right here, if you click this, you can change the text. So I'll just say, hello, I'm a button, okay? And then something I like to do with text buttons and text boxes is use this text scale thing. Basically that makes the text fit the entire button, okay? So there are tons of properties with UI, make sure to play around with them. But a button is basically, well, something you can click. So we can script them something to happen whenever a player clicks this button, for example. Next, let's insert a text label. That And these are just labels, okay? So these are labels of text. They won't do anything if a player clicks them. Uh, so we can use these to tell the player what to do, for example. So let's go ahead and hit text scaled and say click the button, something like that. And there we go, now we have some UI. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this frame so it's up in the corner and I'm gonna resize the frame as well. Keep in mind, if you resize the frame with things in it, it will resize the other things. So what we're going to want to do is click the text label. We can center it up again and click the button and center that again. But now let's have a little discussion about servers and clients because this is going to be really important to understand when we're talking about GUIs and UI and local scripts and all that stuff. What is a client and what is a server? Well, clients, each player has a client. When a player logs on to a game, they create their very own client. So, and these clients connect to a server. The server is what everybody sees, okay? It's the entire game. It is uh, what's hosting the game. Everybody sees everything in these servers. Whereas the clients, they connect to the server. So if we change something on the client, only that player will see it. Or if we, but if we change something on the server, every single player will see it, okay? So local scripts run on the client, meaning if we do something with a local script, it will only happen for that one player. So let me give you an example. Let's go ahead and insert a local script inside of this text button. Now remember, local scripts run in the client, so what we can say, and we'll call this um, button script, and what we can say here is, here's another event, we can say script.parent, right? So the script's parent, which is the button, and then we can say dot mouse button one down. So this is a function or this is an event that just fires whenever a player clicks their mouse down on a button. There's also mouse button one click, which means they fully click the button. Otherwise, there is mouse button one up, which basically means they've clicked and they've lifted their mouse up. OK, you can also say mouse button two down. And that would be right clicking, okay? But I want to stick with mouse button one down, so whenever we click on the button with our uh, left click, then we can say colon connect function. And let's go ahead and do something when the player clicks it. So we can say script.parent.visible equals false, okay? So that's what we're going to do. Now we can hit play. And as you can see, if I click the button, this button is no longer visible. But if we head to the server, What's really interesting is it's still there for the server. And actually that's really logical. It makes complete sense if you understand servers and clients. Because like I mentioned, local scripts run on a client, which means it only made the button invisible for this one client, for me, not for the server. 
Again, like last video, I want to quickly shout out my Discord server. I'm really happy with the community we've been growing over the last couple weeks. I completely revamped the server and I'm really excited. We have some pretty active members. We've got some fun bots, giveaways, all sorts of good stuff. So make sure you join that link in the description or go to discord.io slash codebro29. Hope to see you there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do some more things here. Let's go ahead and insert a text button into screen GUI. Not the frame, okay? Just screen GUI. And let's position it on the side of the screen. We can call this button toggle. And what we're going to do with this button is we're going to, whenever this button is clicked, this frame will become visible. Whenever we click this, it will become invisible, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to insert a local script inside of the toggle. And we'll say script.parent.mouse button one down colon connect function. And we can simply say script.parent.visible equals to false. And script.parent.parent.frame.visible equals to true, right? Because we have the script.parent.visible equals to false. So we want to set the button to not be visible. But script.parent.parent, which is the screen GUI, then the frame, we want to set the frame to be, to be visible. Now inside of our other local script, instead of saying the button's going to be invisible, we'll say script.parent.parent .parent because the parent of the button is the frame. So if we go two parents up, dot parent, dot parent, that's the frame, which is what we want to become invisible. So let's change the text real quick and we can say click me and then this text label, actually let me get out of the script, inside of the text label, let's go ahead and click, uh, change the text to click the button to make the frame frame invisible okay and then let's change this toggle buttons text to say um, make frame visible and also I like to do text scaled next what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna come onto the frame and we're gonna say visible is false that's because we don't want it to start out as being visible. We just want it to go visible whenever we click that button, the toggle button. Alrighty, so if we click this make frame visible button, as you can see, the frame becomes visible. If we click this, it will become invisible. But what's what happened? Well, our button didn't come back to normal. That's because we forgot to script it like that. That was my bad. Uh, so inside of our text button in the frame, down here, we want to say script dot parent dot parent dot parent a lot of parents dot toggle dot visible equals to true because as we can see we're talking about the script so it's parent 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 which is the screen GUI dot toggle okay and we're gonna set that to be visible so something else we can do I'm just gonna show you a couple more properties real quick is background color 3 if we click this little color right here we can actually make this, well, different colors. And you can change this all you want. You can change these in script too, uh, but for that you're gonna need to use RGB, which we're not gonna get into for this. Feel free to look at that in your own time. You can also change the background transparency. So if you set this to 0.5, you can see it's half invisible. Um, some other things you can do is change the text color. So down here, text color three, click that to maybe change it to white. And yeah, those are some cool properties. But now let's go ahead and pl hit play. And if we click this button, as you can see, the frame becomes visible. If we click this again, it becomes invisible and this becomes visible and we can keep playing around with this all we want. So you can do things like this for a shop if you wanted to. You could have this button right here um, be visible and whenever it clicks it, it opens a shop in the middle of the screen and you can do things like that. So uh, that's pretty cool. Now I do want to show you something real quick. Inside of our text button script inside of our um, frame, Let's go ahead and instance a part. So we can say local part equals instance dot new part. And we can say part dot parent equals workspace. By the way, yes, you can just say workspace with a lowercase w instead of game dot workspace. And then you can say part dot position equals to vector three dot new zero comma five comma zero. So whenever we click that button now, it will create a brand new part in the workspace with a position of 0, 050, 0, so five studs high. So if we close this and hit play again, we can come over here, click make frame visible, and whenever we click this, you'll see there's a new part right here. It's our uh, it's our little button part. So if I knock this tower over, oh, I touched the kill brick. <laughs> if I knock that tower over, you can see whenever I do this, it makes a brand new part. There's one right there, there's one right there. So we can do that, but Watch this. We can see all these gray parts that we just created with our um, our button. 
But if we click this current client, that will switch us over to the server. And what you'll notice is there are no gray parts in the server. Okay? So this is, again, like I said, this is because this is a local script. So it's running on the client. So only this, this is only happening for me. Okay? As you can see, the gray things are right here. When I go to the client, when I go to the server, they are not there. So that is local scripts, GUIs, and all that. In the next video, the second to last video, we're getting so close. In the next one, we're going to talk about how clients and servers can interact with each other. So how we can uh, take a button, and when we click it, we can make a part for the entire server, things like that. So um, we're going to be able to convert basically from the client to the server. So that'll be really cool. I hope you're excited for that video. That'll be coming hopefully next week. It'll be all about remote events. Before I end the video, I do want to shout out my first Patreon once again. Thank you so much. You really do mean a lot to me. If you want to become a Patreon and get source code and all that stuff, make sure to join. The link is down in the description. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.